where we are recording pursuant to the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law general law chapter 30a section 18 this meeting of the disability access advisory committee is being conducted via remote participation i'd like to begin with a roll call for the members of the uh uh, DAC. So um, I'll begin with our chair and we'll just check to see that um, you can hear and be heard by the other members. Myra Ross. Mm -hmm. um, um, Elise Link. Yes. Okay. Sarah and Darren. Here. All right. Ian Roadwall. Yes, here. Okay. And Cody Rooney. Here. All right. Fabulous. So. Thank you. Now that um, we've done the roll call and we have a quorum, our chair is welcome to um, call the meeting to order. Okay, thank you. First of all, thank everybody for coming on really short notice to talk about this so that we can weigh in on the project before the deadline that the AAB has because they don't give us very much time. So I appreciate the project people and the committee for coming out on such short notice. So we have a proposal for the, I'm not sure what it's called, computer something or other building, please explain what it is really called. Um, it's a proposal for a variance in the auditorium at the lower level of this building. Um, so if you would introduce yourself and tell us what exactly you're proposing and why, that would be terrific. So um, I'll introduce myself, I'm Dan Aaron's uh, principal with Perkins Eastman, the architects. Um, we have with us Bert Ewart, who is uh, the project man manager for UMass Design and Construction Management. Um, my colleague and the project manager, Carolyn Day, who will walk us and walk you through um, the project. Uh, and we're also uh, joined by Ted Dow, who is uh, our uh, code consultant with JSCE Code Consultants. And I'm not sure, is anybody else from our group on? I don't see anyone else listed. Um, so uh, thank you for, for inviting us. Um, this is uh, the Computer Science uh, Laboratories. It's an addition to well, it's a it's a separate building adjacent to and connected to the existing computer sciences building at the north side of campus on Governor's Drive, um, and uh, it's to support uh, the community of uh, the computer sciences uh, college, uh, which are already in two buildings, and this will make three, but they don't really have a a community uh, center. Um, and so uh, that's that's one of the main reasons for the project together with expanding their faculty by uh, 40 faculty and uh, associated uh, students graduates undergraduate and graduate students and and researchers um, and so uh, with that uh, carolyn are you able to to share and present um, before I do, I didn't know if Bert wanted to say a word. Well, I'll, I'll just very quickly say I'm Bert Ewart. I'm a capital project manager here at UMass. Um, I've been involved on the UMass campus now, or been in, on the UMass campus for over 18 years. I'm a member of the AAB and the AAC uh, committees at UMass. Uh, so I'm familiar with uh, you know, the the uh, the needs of the uh, various disabled communities that we have on campus and um, really excited to be able to present uh, this project to the town of Amherst's uh, uh, com committee on this and uh, I think uh, just I'm going to uh, give it back over to uh, Carolyn and the Perkins Eastman team to uh, show you what it is that we have in mind. I think you've received the package from uh, the MAB hopefully, or, or, and or from me on uh, what the uh, uh, variances are that we're asking uh, for you to consider. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Thank you all. Um, I am the project manager for Perkins Eastman, the architect on the firm. Um, and 
So just briefly, uh, this I'm going to I have some visuals to share. I will do my best to explain them. I've never been really good at doing the image to text descriptions and such. So um, hopefully I'm better verbally than I am typed. Uh, but that, as Dan said, this is uh, a new building connected to the existing computer science building. It is four stories. There is a grade change from the first floor on the north to the second floor on the south. And I will walk through the plans and, and describe that a little bit more. Um, but what we are seeking today is actually two variances. One, which Mara mentioned already, is at the auditorium. We are seek, we have sloped aisles um, that by um, the building code are allowed not to have rails, but because um, because they are skinny. So the idea is you can hold on to the seat backs on either side. Um, but per the Mass Massachusetts rules, that is is not allowed. So we're seeking a variance there. Um, the other one is we have a large connecting stair um, going from the first floor to the second floor in the main space. And that has a continuous rail on one side, non-continuous on the other side. So that is the variance we are seeking, but it's a community stair. And so we know we you guys are going to want to review that um, and really talk through that design. And we look forward to your feedback on that. So well, I wasn't um, even aware of that one. So I don't know anything wow. about it. You're gonna <clears> yeah. So that was all in the, in the packet. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it was in the packet. It wasn't described verbally and mm -hmm. I couldn't find it. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, okay, let me know when, if you guys can all see that. Yep. Great. Okay, so what I am sharing right now is just, you know, I have a splash image that's the... Um, north entrance to the new building and i'm going to go into this um just describe this a little bit more in depth later so that's just a quick introduction to the project but what we are seeing here um centered in the image is the entrance into the building which is kind of in the middle um of the space we have that it's divided into two halves with a connecting element and then to the right on this image which is to the west um because we're looking towards the south, there is a kind of white box building with ribbon windows. That's the existing building. So the two of them are connected to each other. Um, L shaped, sort of L shaped. Um, the the existing building is an I bar shaped, and then we're kind of connecting to the end of. Um, it's like an I on on its side, and we're connected to the end of that. And our building is kind of triangular. Um, that's the to fit into the into the site. Um, I'm, I'm going to pull up a site image in a second, and that I think I can talk through it a little bit when I get there. Um, the building is on the north edge of campus. I've got a campus map up right now, and I, can you guys see my pointer? Uh, uh, very well. No, I can't. I'm, too, I'm. It's too tiny for me. Here, yeah. I'll try. Can I do? Here we go. Uh, yeah, I'm if just going to. Has this work? If this is a PDF, Carolyn, if you can just zoom right in. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. Yeah. There you go. So, um, so here we are on campus. Yeah. Oh, I'm scrolling the wrong way. Oh, where, where is the mouse again? Okay. So it? I just, I just turned off the annotation so that it, it's, I was, I was scrolling the wrong direction. Um, I've uh, highlighted in green here where the building is at the north edge of campus. Can okay. you describe where the building is? Mm -hmm. And it is right on the, on, it is Governor's Drive is the road that um, cir circulates, vents the campus on the north side, which then turns into Commonwealth Avenue as it turns around and goes by okay. the parking and whatever. So this building is right on Governor's Drive. So um, if you're familiar with campus and you're you're driving in from the east, you go through around the rotary, you get onto Governor's Drive, it kind of bends around the turn and Governor's Drive then wraps back around the existing computer science building. And what we're doing is um, nestling in the new building between the existing and Governor's Drive. 
Um, so it's right up against the road. Let me. Which is the existing building? Can you circle it around it? So there's only the existing building is showing on this map right here. I see. So the existing building is right here where it says computer science. Okay. And the new one is. And then the new one is going to go right here. I'm gonna pull up a I'm gonna pull up a site plan right now. Okay. I see. If I can zoom back out. So when you so said shaped like an I. Okay. Do you so mean sort of I'm, also I'm, shaped like an H? Yes. Yeah, so I've pulled up a zoomed in site plan. Okay. So this is looking, we've just oriented it a little bit so that, you know, north isn't quite straight up at the top. So it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so what we have here is the existing computer science building. Mm -hmm. I can pull up yeah. the annotation again. So this is the outline of the existing computer science building here. Mm -hmm. right, so it's like an eye sitting on its side. It runs the long way, runs from east to west. And then the new building is this kind of triangular shape to the east. Okay. And there's a connecting section between the two that's part of the new building that connects the two buildings together so that they can, well, they're physically separate with a, you know, party wall, um, you know, they can, um, act as one together. A big part of the mission of this building is to create a home for computer science. Right now they are in a few buildings, but they don't have like a central place where the students can hang out or, you know, any place for study. It's like all kind, all of their square footage is packed with classrooms and research space, et cetera. So there's no gathering zones. There's no large teaching spaces that is for computer science. And so the goal of this building is to create that. And a lot of what this building does is create moves architecturally to harken back to other parts of campus and also making this connection to the pure computer science building that's right next to it. So that's why they're connected. Um, we've aligned all the floors. There's no um, changes in elevation between the floors. <clears throat> the existing building is three stories. We have one additional story on this one. Um, but and the other Lower thing, or higher, one higher. So the first okay. floor is half buried. Um, so the north side here is lower on this side, and then it goes up. There's a 16 foot change in grade as you go around Governor's Drive up to the top, the south corner of the new building. So. What we're doing is we're coming in on the south side on the second floor and on the north side on the first floor. I interject for a second. Yes, Carolyn. please, Dan. So um, what, one thing that um, is happening here is that these two built computer science buildings um, are separated from the next building uh, down on the page or south. Um, and there's a there's a, a driveway there now, but um, the site slopes away fairly dramatically from high on the right to lower on the left, and the pathways and roadways there are not accessible. Yeah. And so, um, if you can see some jigging and jogging of pathways, that's all very uh, carefully designed by our mm -hmm. landscape architect colleagues to make this all an accessible uh, exterior path all the way from Governor's Drive at the east down to the existing building. So we're, we're providing um, a, a, an accessible path that doesn't exist there. And what about the building to the south of it? I don't know what building that is. Uh, that's E-Lab 1 uh, Engineering Lab, uh, okay. which um, is we're, we're not we're not addressing right now we're you're not. not trying to become to make this accessible to that no no they're they're not uh they're not connected and then as a, a practical matter uh that building the access is to the sort of west and south and yeah. this is a side with a loading dock and it's it's not an accessible okay. route okay yeah, thank you, Dan, for bringing that up. That's a big part of what's happening with the site here um, is making this accessible because right now it's a pretty steep drive. And so someone who is, 
you know, students might think that they can get down at and, you know, wouldn't be able to. So we're really making a big part of the site design is making this accessible route from across the site east to west and then eventually because this is going to become more of the through path with the the campus master plan this will be um, accessed more and more so it's really important that this become accessible path and um, I have some images which kind of show uh, some renderings that show what that looks like um, which I'm happy to go to unless there's questions about the plan. I have a question. First. Is, yeah. there, is there a sidewalk along Governor's Drive, along the west side of Governor's yes. Drive, along the side? And is that an accessible sidewalk that connects to the rest of the campus? It, the it, it, it is. The sidewalk not. connects to the rest of campus, but the slope is not accessible. Got it. That's, the way. Okay. That's correct. Got it. And, okay. um, and, and so we're also providing uh, van drop-offs oh okay i'm gonna okay. you go right ahead yeah that's okay dude. <laughs> sorry i got that so I was I was because you cannot get there from other parts of campus without a van because of right. the topography of the because of the topography so we actually are providing two drop-offs um in the plan right now oh sorry didn't i didn't mean to click forward okay so this i, um, I have a question very quick yeah. question the name I look at it, it says new computer science uh, laboratories. Uh -huh. Are they really laboratories or it's just that? They're more, they're computational laboratories. So it's people sitting at desks um, doing computer work. And then there is also some amount of small electronics work. And there's a maker space on in the building for the students to use. But, oh, it's, but it's not you know, like laboratory. It's that's not. not. There's fine, no. Yeah. You know, you know? There's yeah. There's one fume hood in case they, you know, want to do some small chemical stuff like when they're assembling things in the maker space. But there's no research with chemistry or biology or anything like that in this building. So it's it's computational labs. Like so works like, workspaces, sort of. It's workspaces. Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. Um. So for the this plan I've just pulled up is a diagram showing the accessibility around the site. So there's a lot of green arrows here kind of showing what the new accessible routes are that we're doing around around that we were pointing out on the last plan. So you can see from Governor's Drive, it kind of slopes, starts to slope down to the entrance on the, um, the south entrance on the second floor. Then it slopes down to a plaza um, drop, which is also the loading dock for the build that building we were talking about to the south. Then it continues to slow down until it gets to in front of the computer science building. Then we have to have a switchback ramp, unfortunately, because there's just too much topographical change. And we're also dealing with rainwater issues. Rain is currently getting into the new the existing computer science building right now. So we're trying to mitigate that as well. And then it continues, but then it also continues straight across to the west. Um, where the current ADA parking is on the west side of the building. The drop-off, there's two drop-offs on Governor's Drive. One is to the north, um, and that gets you within 100 feet of the existing building entrance and also the north entry. And then we also have a drop-off that is at the end of this service drive that is that you can come, you know, come down this walkway to get to the front entry. If needed, somebody could pull down this road to drop someone off, but then you'd have to make a three point turn when you get down to the end of the loading dock. So the intent here is that this is more of a pedestrian path and just for loading um, than for the drop so off. So one drop off is to the north of the building on the east side and one drop off is on the west side of the building. One drop one off is on the north and one drop off is on the east. On the east. And then okay. there's two ADA parking spaces on the west. Okay. Can I ask a question? Is the drop off to the north the um, the accessible routes from there to the existing computer bu building? Is that all? Those routes are those. So already we're regrading. Yeah, we're regrading the entire site, including that north part, to become accessible. Okay, thanks. Yeah. There's also a parking lot across the across Governor's Drive, and there's an accessible route from the parking lot um, down to that north entrance as well. As long as they don't go further south, because that's well, they can, yeah. Okay. okay. 
Yeah. So there's yeah. A, the, accessible to the building, but if you want to get, you know, elsewhere on campus, it's a little. Okay. Correct. All right. Okay. That's a little odd. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking at it about it from the perspective of a student who has a class and needs to get to another class and they have to wait for the van and they need and they're going to be late because they can't do it themselves and the van oh, oh, isn't going to be on time. Oh, so a question, you know, um, the bus stop going away from all of the accessible entrances that there should really be a accessible entrance on that end also. I'm sorry, Cody, I'm having a little trouble understanding you. I, I have, think he wants to know I, if I there's an accessible record. entrance, <laughs> an accessible entrance to the bus stop, um, which I guess is on the on Governor's Drive. Cody, is that what you're saying it is? There's two bus stops. Okay, where are they? Oh. So there's, I believe, Bert, correct me if I'm wrong, there's one up here that's like just at the edge of the page on the west. Is that right? That that is correct. There's the bus stops are kind of across from each other on Governor's Drive, just to the west of the existing uh, computer science building, and uh, we're not proposing on relocating those, mostly because of grading issues on Governor's Drive to try to create that much flat space. You know, we can get enough flat space in front of the building for the uh, special transportation uh, van. But not for a full, uh, you know, sixty-foot PVTA bus. So the answer right. to his question is, you cannot get out of the building and go to a bus. Uh, I'm, actually, you I'm can. Not sure. You can. You can. Yeah. So you can get out of the building and use the sidewalk and head directly to the west instead of going up to Governor's Drive and then walk. Um, up the sidewalk to get to those bus stops. It's, it's, yeah, and and, and it's accessible? it's true that it's true yeah. that it's not there's not an accessible arrow here, and that that may be an oversight, um, because I believe that 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 part of the existing sidewalk is most likely all accessible. It's but but we really flat at that end. Yeah, it's, it's pretty I, flat I, there. Actually, Carolyn, where you've been running your hand up and down, it's really the along Governor's Drive, that portion of Governor's Drive right. is actually fairly flat. This yes. portion. Right through there. Yeah. Um, so, so is there an exit of the building right toward where he's talking so about? This green dot, yeah. So there's all, everywhere you see a green dot is an accessible entrance. Okay, I don't see any green dots. Sorry. So what I want to know is yes, if there are, if there are two accessible entrances, one from the new building and one from the existing building that are on the side of the building nearest the bus stops okay yeah sorry sorry if I, I talk over anybody I, i'm i'm recovering from an ear infection as well so it's it's hard for me to oh i've been there recently no fun. yeah it's great it's awesome it's constant ringing in one side stuffy yep. on the other side it's great um i haven't had one since i was five um so all right so does that answer everybody's questions about the- Well, I, I cannot yeah. see the accessible entrance to the building on the west side, Governor's Street side. Is there any way you can point it with your cursor? I'm looking for the- So um, there's two circle. entrances. There is, there is the bus stop is, is the, the, on the west side, there is not an entrance to the building. There are oh, actually, parking actually, spots. Actually. Well, there is a. So there isn't. So that, you know, like a student that oh. gets off the bus, which is on the west side, that's kind of between those wheelchair signs. And then they, to get into the building, they have to go up 
toward uh, toward north and then make a right and then get through the end. Uh, can you above. explain? So, uh, yes, yeah, sure. actually, I'll, can you I'll, can you zoom in, please, Carolyn, yeah. as far as you can to the west side? To the other end. I don't know what just be... happened. It's blanking out on me now. It's a little tricky, but I've been having a lot of computer issues today, so I, I simplified. That's why we need the computer science help building. <laughs> That's right. I just wanted I just wanted to explain that so, I, in fact there is an accessible entrance at the west end of the building. It's right next to the loading dock on the building, and it's raised up above grade by quite a bit with a with a just was standard. Listening wheelchair ramp that goes up. So you can see it there, you know, if you can, uh, behind the toters that are sitting there. It's so not the, a pretty entrance. It's really kind of a, a sad thing, and but this is the it is accessible. That's, that's in the existing building, but the existing building is connected directly to the new building through, through the corridor system on the building. So, you know, effectively we do have, you know, accessibility from that end. And that's why so the handicapped parking spaces are located there. So I'm trying to understand the student that gets off the bus at the bus stop. That's not the bus stop. You're not looking at the bus stop. You know, you know, turn that thing around. You're looking at the place where the van would There's, drop off? There are the yeah. bus stops. The oh, bus stop is on Governor's Drive itself. OK, so the so person gets uh, the person using a wheelchair use the accessible bus rather than waiting for to schedule with a van. So they get off it and they're going to heading toward the computer center. So can you, is there any way you can show where they will walk? Why don't you turn, around, turn that uh, image around and we can walk straight up to it. Oh. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's turn around. Yeah, turn that's around. the bus. Oh. You keep going down Governor's Drive. Okay. So the the entrance with the ramp is here, and then um, there's another entrance uh, up here, which is going to be reconfigured. But this is the existing building and uh, pathways that go up there that are gonna be, that's actually not quite accessible now, but it will be when we are done with it. That Can I be... interrupt and just ask, make a request? I'm legally blind and I'm trying to follow your cursor or your hand, whatever that mm -hmm. is, and it's flying all I'm over. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, if when you point to something, can you leave it there for a couple seconds? Yes, and I apologize. Thanks so much. Yeah. So uh, this is the sidewalk along I see. Governor's Coming Drive. Up. Right now, there's a sloped sidewalk that goes up to the north entrance of the existing building. Oh, I see. Oh, that's better. And yeah. that all of this grading is going to be adjusted with the new project so that this is meets accessible slopes. Okay. So there, there is no lift or anything. They'll just go There's straight through no, the door. No lift and no need for railings in this area either. No. I see. Words, and this a, is the this is the old existing building. That's All correct. Right. Yes. Okay. The right. new building will be up here uh, to the east, and this oh. is a, a a bit of a a hillock that is going to be reconfigured so that there's an accessible path to the lower level of the building on the north side. That's what's on top of the grass area now. Right, so- Will there be another bus stop there? There will not be another bus stop in part because there's this curve here in Governor's Drive. Too dangerous. Yeah. That's very dangerous um, yeah. to, to have uh, a bus that you would need to pass on that curve. Can I get so, back to Cody's question? Cody's question, mm -hmm. the, the follow-up to Cody's question is, how far from the PBTA bus stop is it to uh, get into an accessible entrance to what would be the old building? Mm -hmm. um, 
not sure. That, that, I don't know. It. We've been concentrating on the van drop, off <laughs> making sure that's within a hundred feet. Yeah. I don't know if Bert has that answer handy. I, I, I don't have that answer handy. I can say it doesn't change. Um, and that does get you into the new building once you're in the doors of the existing building. I, I so, can, we um, can measure it. Um, we can, we can measure it and, uh, yeah, I'm just interested it. because um, all of us knows know about um, scheduling um, van mm -hmm. service, right? Yes. And van service doesn't come when you ask for it. Um, mm -hmm. You often have to wait up to a half an hour for it. Yeah. Um, and if you are yeah. run, trying to run to another class or get to another class in a reasonable amount of time, you might be better off. On a bus. Yeah. That's um, right. Myra, the, and, the, the distance is approximately 250 feet from the existing bus stop to the entrance that is ramped on the west side of the existing building. And okay. um, it's, it's probably another 50 or 60 feet. Um, to the north entrance of the existing building. However, if they go to the new building, yes. then it's another story, right? So to no, reach to the new the building- same. Well, you wouldn't go in that way. Yeah, the new, so you the, go through, in, you get inside the old building and then go you'd cross over to, you'd cross over. to yeah, the new yeah. building. Into the new building, yeah. 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 And it's on the same level, Saren. Right, right. Did you make any covered walkways um, around this building? Or are they just not. all? We they're not. not, okay, okay. Okay, so we're at four, four o'clock. I just, I don't have to be anywhere, but I just wanna put that out there. I'm, I think this is a really valuable discussion, um, but I just wanna let everybody know. I don't know if anybody has any time constraints. Please let me know if you do. Can we get to the variance request then maybe? Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> let's get to the variance request. Okay, so I'm just, I'm gonna, uh, we'll send these ar around again, but, um, and I'll make sure that these are labeled very well and described very well so you know what you're looking at when we send them around again. Okay, so I'm gonna go, um, right now, um, what I've pulled up is an image of the first floor plan. And I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit um, to focus on, the new building. So um, what we have here is we're showing the first floor with the entrance at the north. Um, the paler color, if you can see that, is basically circulation open space. Um, pale yellow? The pale yellow, yes. Um, okay. And then what one of the things that's a little deceiving about this is what we're trying to color in is the programmed area. So there's also a big orange space in the middle that's open to that pale yellow space. It's a big, what we're calling the commons. So this is the undergraduate commons. This is the main gathering place for the students. And the theme here is to study alone together because these are computer science students and they don't gather in large groups apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of having like big tables for people to work at, we're populating it with more with small tables and individual seating and whatever that kind of furnishing. Um, on the what you can also see, so you come in, and if you're coming in from the north and you look to your left, this orange area is the colloquium. This is a large gathering space for presentations and you know, poster sessions, next, whatever, that's a flat floor space. Next to the blue thing? Uh, uh, no, it's um, up at the top of the page. So the blue- okay. I can't, Your cursor is like flying, so I can't follow I'm sorry, it. you know what, let me see if I can- It's just, it's just that it bounces, and oh, I, I have no idea what be, you're pointing to. It could be the, because the images are too, okay. I'll just keep it still. The, okay. At the top of the page, that orange at the very top, that's the colloquium. Okay. Um, Got it. It looks like it has squares. It's a wide open space. It's a wide open space. There is a dashed line that goes through it. That's a movable wall, so they can divide it in half and have uh, on one side and 
talking on okay. the other side or whatever. And it's flat floor. Flat floor. No, this thing. isn't anything that you're going to ask about because you don't think about this. But what what is the flooring like oh, in this wide open space? So we do think about acoustics. Um, nope, that's not what I'm open, <laughs> the wide open space. Um, <laughs> we have right now because of so much traffic and we actually just had a discussion about this earlier today is polished concrete um and then the and then we have acoustic treatments on the walls and i actually do want to talk a little bit about acoustics when we're walking through this space and because we're trying to break up the space a little bit and i know that especially for people who um might be blind or have vision issues that that's something that's helpful so i'd like to get a little bit of okay. feedback to Good. think about acoustics Carol, in the space carolyn carolyn yeah. if i may add um generally speaking the floor finishes here are all smooth floor finishes either polished concrete or uh, a very 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 low uh a nap carpet like you find in in the in um in uh airport uh concourses that you can okay. you can roll okay. over or, or and and don't catch your feet too much if you have trouble yep. lifting feet. like commercial low pile commercial yeah okay yep. very, so, very, very low pile. Good. so good. here's my question um and it's it's a question for people with visual impairments and people who yep. are blind yep. if everything on the floor is the same color it's very difficult to find your way or to look towards something different so you right. need to have some contrast in the color of the floor. It might be that if you have a pathway that you're trying to demarcate, that that would be a different color than the surrounding carpet or the surrounding floor so that you can say, okay, I'm supposed to stay on the green or I'm supposed to stay on the red or I'm supposed to, and if, if I wanna get anywhere. A blind person cannot get feedback from that we need texture difference. So either we're supposed to stay on the carpet or we're supposed to stay off the carpet or we're supposed to stay off a textured concrete. But if we learn we're supposed to stay on the smooth concrete and we can run a cane along the side of the texture and know where it is or along the side of the carpet and know where it is, then we're gonna know where we are wide open spaces are the worst thing in the world for blind people yep. and the second worst thing in the world for visually impaired people because i used right. to be one of them i used to be one of them but you need color contrast in your flooring and in your walls if all your walls are the same color elise is going to go oh god which way am i facing yeah there aren't any windows i need right. to go toward the red wall i need to go toward the blue wall i need to go toward the striped wall but I can't go, can't know where I'm going if all the walls are green. She right. knows, she's, yeah, she described it just right. Okay, great. Right. Um, and that's good because we're trying to put in accent walls, like like this is the, you know, and, and strategically decide which walls are going to be like the accents. So that's helpful. Um, one thing, this space, um, it's not fully... Uh, so this is an open space in the middle, but there's actually um, a below a story. So the colonnade like is kind of the way that you walk around underneath. So it'll be, so there's windows on one side, there's skylights above, there will be a light difference, but there will not necessarily, but we haven't really factored in a texture difference for all of that yet. So we should, we can definitely look at that um, for that navigation because this big blue space that's at the bottom of the page, that's the auditorium. So um, people are going to need to be able to. Uh -huh. okay. Can I ask one more question? You just yeah. mentioned a lower part of that space and an upper. Is, is there a step down? No, I, I just meant that the the ceiling is lower. Oh, okay, gotcha. The ceiling you. is lower. Yeah. yeah so the ceiling will be right. So we, I have some. Um, I, so when you're when you're standing when you come in the door, you're standing underneath. You know, the floor above. And then to your right and left, there's kind of corridors. You know, there's this is a mass timber building, so there's big columns we're trying to show off, and that they're sailing above you, walking towards the auditorium or walking back towards the elevator. And then as you step forward into the space, that's when it becomes a multi-story space. Okay, so there's no level change really. There's no level change in the 
in okay. the commons itself, correct. Is, is there a change, change in ceiling height? I'm sorry, say that again, Myra? Is there a change in ceiling height? Yes. That has to do with your yes. acoustic. So if you're going by the elevator, the ceiling is, low, ceiling is lower. So if you go to a place where you can hear that there's a lower ceiling, you're gonna to be going toward the elevator. And when you're going away from that, you're gonna be going toward a way to get to the auditorium or not. So, so Myra, the, there's a, it, it's hard to see no matter how well you can see on this plan, but basically around the outside of this space is a lower ceiling. Um, do you have okay. the second? Uh, I have a second floor. I floor, also have rendering the, the space. I don't know if those will be easier for people to see. Okay. But, um, so, I, so people I, can see in the middle part, you can see down to the bottom to the auditorium. Right. So, you're so okay. if you can, if you can see this one, the white piece in the middle is an opening in floors two, three, and four. Um, it's a donut, essentially. Yep. And so when you're on the very lower level between the colloquium space and the auditorium, you'd be under uh, a walkway above. If you were in the middle of the space, you would be under a four-story high space. So if you if you were to stay towards the edges, you'd be under a call it a ten foot ceiling. Uh, if you were to stray into the middle, you'd be under a four story ceiling. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay. And allow me just to appreciate that you can understand that there's a ceiling above you when it's there, and I cannot. I just. Well, it depends how high it is. Yeah, but. It doesn't depend how high it if is for me. I just don't if hear it's it. 10 feet, if it's 10 feet, you can hear it. If the difference is 10 feet to 16 feet, eh, depends. Yeah, it's right. But no, depends I just... how much attention you can pay depending on the rest of the noise. Yeah. yeah but, but 10 feet to 60 feet, then you can definitely oh, yeah. sense yeah. the difference. Right? I really, yeah, 60 I feet, really, there's nothing above mm -hmm. you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And I think um, I'm just going to take a moment to point this out. I'm going back to the first floor plan. Um, so you walk on either side, Dan talked about this donut in the middle of this donut is this big stair that we were talking about. That's the, the community stair on the south end of that, which is also called orange in this plan. That's an undergraduate pantry and quiet study. So that space is all one story. And the idea is that that back space is the more quiet acoustically space. It's a quiet space for students to study. So what we're trying to accomplish here is to help, you know, students with lots of neurodiversity so that if you're somebody like me who can't sit in the library because you get distracted by every single noise, you're going to want to sit in the middle of the floor with everybody going around because that kind of muffles all the individual pieces. But if you're somebody who needs real quiet, we've got a room with a door that you can study in um, and then kind of all the kinds of spaces in between. So we've got varying height, varying furniture, you know, open, closed, a number of students that can fit into conference rooms or huddle spaces. And so that's the idea through this building and the, and the commons. Um, and that make, means that the spaces themselves have different qualities just because of the amount of light and air and sound that's going to be in the space because we varied the sizes of those spaces, um, if that makes okay. sense. So it sounds like, I mean, I know you want to talk about the stair and I want to hear about that, but it sounds like you're going to have a opportunity for a lot of noise pollution in this. There's opportunity space. for a lot of noise pollution in the middle of the commons. Yes. Yep. So for people who can't function by finding their way with a lot of noise pollution, there has to be really be clear textural changes on the floor yep. because there isn't any other way to get your information. Okay. May, I ask, may I ask a question about that, Myra? Yeah, yeah. Um, let, me, let me first preface it by explaining what the floor of that commons is, how it's constructed. We have uh, a concrete structural slab that sits on the ground um, then there's a, a layer of insulation and then there's some more concrete on top of that that is exposed to 
the space and which has inside of it radiant uh, heating and, and cooling uh, cool. tubing. Um, and so um, that that top slab is is polished and uh, to a certain degree. It's not to say that it's slick, but um, that will have a certain number of uh, saw cuts in it, we'll call them, cuts that control the cracking of the slab. As in expansion joints. As in, yeah, we, we use a, a slightly different term, but yes, as okay. in uh, okay. as in expansion joints, the, con okay. the construction of the pieces of the concrete going together. And um, we're patterning that in order to have them close enough together to control cracks. But I was curious when you were describing that to see if that kind of a, you know, it's like- um, How far apart are they? Well, that's what that's what we haven't determined yet. But I was wondering if that might be a device that we could use um, in you order to. You can use it in your artistic wayfinding. design. Well, I, I would I'm, say you could use it in the artistic design of the of the uh, of the texture of the floor. If they're going to be six or seven feet apart, it's not so helpful. Yeah. Um, how how close do they need to be to be helpful, or is it is it well? In other words, Depends they could also change direction go. too, right? right? Yeah, okay. So what Depends could be helpful? Where they go. Like if I knew I had to stay between two expansion joints and they were, you know, I would learn it if I were a student there. Okay. But if I, if they were six, seven feet apart and I knew that I was going parallel to the expansion joints, I'm all set. If cool. I have to so, go across the expansion joints, I'm not all set, except okay. that I would find out if I had veered because my feet wouldn't be parallel or perpendicular to an yeah. extension. An expansion. Joint. I mean, with that, I mean, if they're that um, detectable to you, it's possible, you know, that we we have um, a double line or something like that yeah. that defines the pathway. Um, yeah. Which it sounds like it would be a bright line for you that many people would never notice, <laughs> but but you but it would be helpful for you to get right. from point A to point B. We learn how to trail cracks. We learn how to do all kinds of ridiculous things. Yeah, that yeah. M most people wouldn't notice. Um, but I but I think, yeah, I mean, but if, if I were, if the track, if the cracks were something that if I knew I had gone over one, I would be, oops, I'm out of line. That would mm. be good. If I have to cross them, it would be good if I had some other ones that go, I yeah. don't know, I mean, I I was thinking that These the edges all... of the path could be double, and yeah. then then yeah. the others would be every six feet or something, and and yep. the double would be up. Oh, we've got that an edge work. for you. That, it, yeah, if they were double, like six inches apart or three inches apart, yeah. Yeah, three we have col apart. we have columns that are two feet, right? And everything else might be six feet or some, or or we could we could do something else there. It's a really tricky thing. You, I I think I mean this is part of your finishes, right? This is in construction doc, not really in, this is really in design. Yes, it is in construction because you have to- We're imprint, just, we're just right? about to provide construction documents, yeah. So this is, I just, I want to get to the real thing, but this <laughs> is why you cannot come to a di disability committee at 75 or 90%. You have to come earlier because everybody on this committee has said stuff that I'm sure you didn't think about. Yeah, and it has to be built in from the beginning, and so that's why you know we I, need to be in on projects from twenty five, fifty percent on construction documents. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I, I mean, I, that's the I, last. Time I I'll appreciate say. that, and certainly don't argue that. I will say that this is valuable stuff that we're just now really ready. In other words, we haven't even drawn those joints yet, okay. so this is actually perfect timing for that particular feedback. I'm not the expert. But there are yeah. people who are that I would recommend that you show the picture to. But that's that can come later. Let's go okay. to the stairway. Okay, great. All right, let's. I'm gonna jump down so we can talk about the stair. Excuse me for a second. Okay. All right. So this is. I've. I'm. What I've pulled up is a zoomed-in image of the stair. What we have is a stair 
a, a walking stair that is seven feet wide that is divided in two parts. That's four six and two six. The idea being the wider part if you just want, if people want to just walk up and down, and the skinnier part, the rail that divides the skinnier part is adjacent to a seating type stair. <clears throat> We've included built-in benches. So the stair, these are each three steps deep. And there is um, seating for someone in a wheelchair. There's room at the top and the bottom of the stair to be with your friend. I wanna show, I wanna go through this real quick so I can, cause I know yep. there were some concerns. I'm gonna show the plan and I'm gonna show a couple images and then we can kind of talk about it, talk through it. Where, where's the stair? I'm, I'm having trouble picturing this whole thing and really so, making sense. Yeah, me too. Okay, so I don't actually, it. I think this next page might show it better. Okay. If it'll load. Here we go. This is a 3D image from the Oh top. my goodness. What? And then yeah. we're going to, I'm going that's, next. That's hold on, hold on. The next one's loading. All right. We're at the bottom <laughs> of the stair. We're at, you've walked into the building. Mm. You've walked into the commons. You've just walked out from underneath that donut that Dan was talking about. You're looking straight ahead at the stair. So this is a connecting stair from the first floor that goes up to the second floor to go to the out the exit the second floor. It's where everybody it, sees. Yeah. Okay. To the left of the image, there's you see a white wall. That corridor on the other side of the uh, column line is goes straight down. That goes back to the elevator and to that quieter commons area. To your left side, it's wider and around. That is goes back around to the auditorium. The building is divided in two halves and we've stayed with this kind of theme throughout. On your left side is the bar. Everything is straight, it's wood. We've really accentuated that. To, the, to your right is glass. This is the crystal. And so this is had this um, has the metals and glasses and stuff for finishes. It's still a wood frame, but that's how we're differentiating the sides. So when you're navigating through the building, you kind of know what side of the building that you're on. Oh. And <clears throat> which and so is the wood? The old is wood and the new is the glass and metal? No, it's all, this is all new. Oh. And this is the new building, right? This is the new building. We're only talking about the new building right now. Yep. Okay. So you walk into the new building from the north mm. and you you come to this four-story space. Um, and so it's oh, this open undergraduate commons with all of this free-floating seat seating. And mm. then you walk forward to this larger stair that is seven feet wide with a continuous rail on one side and, it, and a railing on that's not centered on the stair but it's it's four and a half feet from the other side but it has a break in the middle because there's a landing so that you can get in and out from the seating area on the common stair um oh it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense no I mean, hold on i'm gonna zoom in a little bit more remember what you saw on the student center sarah and it's the same thing oh god no no, 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 no. So, oh i see so there's like a what are those? And somebody's sitting on it. Uh, uh, they're yeah. like benches? So they're or? benches. They're built-in benches. So what it is, is every three steps, there's a built-in bench that so, kind of takes so up some... The, and part so of the reason... The, Go ahead. So the students, uh, like uh, I see, I enlarge my vision here. There's somebody with a red sweater mm -hmm. uh, carrying a bag. And when she goes up a couple of stores, uh, uh, steps then she can move to the Correct. bench why do you have benches there i cannot understand I like so there's a couple of reasons one is mm -hmm. we're trying to get in as much seating as we can in this space for students to hang out and power without having power in the floor um, so we only have, we have power around the perimeter and this is one of our solutions to power in the middle. Um, and we also have program area underneath this. So we're trying to provide this, you know, moment that um, 
is more casual for the students to be able to sit and study or wait for class or something like that. However, if I am a student using a wheelchair, there is no way I can utilize those, right? If you're a student using the wheelchair, yes. then you are you can pull in at the bot base or pull in at the top, but you yeah, can't right. Yeah. So it's and just are, for yeah, ambulatory are, people. There are approximately a hundred um, seats of different configuration to be finalized, but about a hundred seats on uh, the lower level. There are also some seating around at the top level. Um, and one thing to to underscore that this is not um, this is not as wide as the student union, and it's also not designed as a presentation. We talked to the college um, faculty and dean extensively, and they're adjacent. There's the auditorium and the colloquium space. So this is um, really not meant to be, say, a presentation space where it's an intentional gathering space on those uh, stairs. It's a hangout. It's a hangout. It's another option, much like the seating that you see in the foreground here. Um, that you would see if you went around the stairs to a quieter space that's an undergraduate commons. Yeah, um, there's a there's cafe seating up on level two at the top of this that's Here, fully right. accessible. Um, so it's just one of uh, many, many places um, that are part of uh, a greater community space. Here, and this is then at the top and there's cafe seating just off the screen um, and at the edge of the there's touchdown space um, at the edge and one of the things that we've been really conscious of with we have a few of these touchdown spaces um, around work bars around the building I'm just going to show I don't know if my if it's changing she, or not I'm not going to click um, these images are really really big we're trying for universal access as much as we can. So there's no haves and haves nots. So for example, this one is at 34 inches. So this is a space where anybody can pull up, sit, stand, whatever, talk, participate in the conversation. This is up on the third floor, one story above. And you know we have these kind of similar moments around the building um, and the same with the, um, the one to the side. Oh, one, one too many. So that's kind of what the idea is that we have all these kinds of informal spaces to be. Um, and the variance request, the specific variance request, I'm trying to find an image that kind of shows it is the break that's in the feeling. There is no rule right now about community stairs. We understand that that might be changing, but. Um, May I ask a question? Sure. I See that it's a lease. I see that at the top of the stairs, when you're coming down, is there a rail? So I'm trying to see one side of the staircase does not have a railing. So or, here you can kind of see it in this overhead image, which is a little disorienting. Where, where? No, I can't. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I can't um, see it all now. All right. I'll try again. Yeah. Um, okay. So there's a rail on one side of the wider stair. So there's a four, the total stair is seven feet wide. So when you're going up the stairs, mm -hmm. you have to hold on to the right railing. You can, you can go if you're yeah. going. So there's two rails. Yeah, I see that. But so, but they're on the, okay. So there's one you can go up on the and hold you the left side. You can go up between one. the two, right? Can I share a screen? Yeah, please, Dan. Okay. And then, yeah, but then when you're coming down, you there's only one railing going down. No, the idea there's is no that it's here. Dan marked it out. So the idea is that if you're just uh, going up and down, you go between the two rails. Ah, uh, so when I'm sorry, bear with me because okay. I'm not. I don't visualize space very well. Um, yeah. Okay. So when you're going down, let's say you're at the top of the stairs. Yeah, the rail. There's no left. There's no left railing. There's only one. I mean, there's no right railing. There's only one. So here's one. here. This is the top. Uh, where, can you see the orange dot on my screen? Yeah, Are you seeing okay, my screen? That's the top. That's the top. If you come down this way. Yeah. Yeah. 
On your right hand side, there's a continuous handrail. Right. Okay. So there is one on the right coming down. Yeah. Yeah. It gets okay. you down to the bottom. Oh, and there's a break on the other side. And there's okay. a landing. Okay. That is like this. Okay. And so I if see you're it now. if you're coming up from the bottom, the open circle, mm -hmm. there's a red railing on your right. But there's yes. a short gap of okay. uh, about three feet that okay. there's not a railing, and then it picks up again and brings you up to the top. Okay. And what okay. what is the reason for that break in the railing? The reason is that if you are going up or down and mm -hmm. were to choose to sit, say on a bench uh, here. Right. That allows you to come through. Okay, so if you want to go to a bench, um, maybe like three, four steps down, how would you go there? So you mean three, three or four steps yeah. down from like the top? Like if you want sir? to go to the third, a second bench, say, yeah, that one. This one. How would you come? Yeah. So if you're coming down, yes. um, you could at that Take point that. choose to right. come here. That's right. That's right. So if people think that they're going to sit in the benches, mm -hmm. so couldn't they take that narrower stair with only one railing on the left side because they are ambulatory people? So if you, you're yeah. asking if we made this continuous. Yes. And what that would do is it would make the... Uh, it would make if you were coming up the stair. Let's say you go up on, yes. and, and the railing is on your right hand side. You would be able to have a continuous railing. Yes. Oh and, yeah. And and you just wouldn't be able to cut across at that place without unless, going to the top or bottom. Unless right. you go under the railing, of course. Or you, you go under the railing. Right. I suppose that's you right. could do that that's too. That's right. Which we've never seen a student do ever. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. You're not going to see me do work. that. I can't so, do that maneuver anymore. Uh, <laughs> so, so there's no a really interesting chance. point. She's bringing up a really interesting point. And yeah, so, so the reason if you're, if you're intending to sit, you could use the narrow part. That's means, right. And if that's you're right. intending to go up or down safely, you mm -hmm. would use the wide part. And you could hold on on either side. Because what I'm nervous about, this is precisely the same thing that happened in the student center where they made that railing on the left side and they didn't put anything in the middle so that mm -hmm. if people are going to be going both ways against the railing mm -hmm. on the continuous railing. So mm -hmm. this is exactly the same thing because you can't tell, you know, people are supposed to walk on the right um, mm -hmm. and most people do, but some people don't. And some people, like you said way earlier, are looking at their phones. Yeah. And so I see this Saren's suggestion actually makes a lot of sense because it makes that stairway at least safer for people That's going right. up and That's down. Right. If That's you want right. to sit, you don't go on the wide part. If That's you right. want to. You follow the. Yeah. I, and I that follow. means that means uh, you don't have any. Uh, disabling issues like for example somebody like me who is the wheelchair i cannot use that period you know right. i can only sit at the very bottom if my uh friend is sitting on the first bench i can either we can either sit on the first one or the very top one yep. so right. then if it is another ambulatory person then they can easily take the uh narrow stairs with a railing on one side so uh, they're I, not, you know, if they're visually impaired, Myra, like you would know is you, the bench you would use is safely would right. be the one on the, right. at the bottom or at the top. Right. So, or I would take the railing and I would know I have to go four steps down and then I want to sit there and meet my friends. That's right. That's but right. if it's the other way, it would be not safe. No. That's Making the continuous, that's a really interesting, you might have to make this is another thing where the stairway is too narrow. Um, with, I don't know if you can make it wider, you probably can't, but the stairway at seven feet is too narrow to really achieve the kind of safe passages. Um, 
that we have in mind, but I don't know where you'd put that middle rail. I don't know where the, if you would move it slightly into the wide part so that there was a little more room on the narrow part if it was gonna be continuous. But I think that's an interesting question for people uh, for traffic flow, because kids are gonna be running up and down. So I have an interesting question for you uh, all, um, because I think we have a little bit of flexibility in this width. So what would you, what in your mind, I mean, obviously we have to study this, would be a comfortable, safe width? I don't know, but I'm thinking about, I have a little entrance to my house, it's five feet wide and yours is less. And if I had to have kids running up and down through my little five feet wide, that would be not a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, even if it was, I was thinking in the other project, nine feet, and I think that's what the gentleman from the state said as well, nine feet would be, would make it, you would have, you know, three and a half and five and a half or three and six or something. But it seems to me that there needs to be a solid rail on both sides. Yeah. Just because people can, they can know that they're on the very edge and that, yep. that there isn't going to be anybody who's going to knock them over because yes. they're running down exactly. the steps. So and I... uh, uh, just to a question to do benches, like if comfortably, how many people can be able to sit on these benches? So my, it, my, what yeah, I'm trying it's... to get at, if it is comfortable for five seats, five people to sit next to each other we can you can easily look into narrowing it and make it downsizing mm -hmm. to four people sitting comfortably yeah. there we, you we, go we, we can we, we can see if there's any reason not to make the stair nine feet i think i i nothing comes to mind right now but let us um take that under advisement if that would be okay okay and the, the no, other... that, that's really good i love her idea and because but, it but, keeps hey. it safe for everybody. No, it's that, great. Yeah. But can I can I just ask something and 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 forgive my naivete? But um, if I'm down at the bottom yeah, where that yeah. open circle is, and I come up, mm -hmm. I'm I'm using the we'll call it the middle rail, even though there's only two. I'm using the yeah, yeah, rail yeah. at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm using my right hand. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's just say we get past this landing at the very top of this location. Mm -hmm. Is is this space not analogous to the landing in the sense that you're taking a couple of steps from one railing to the other, but it's a perfectly flat space. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to hear you talk about wait, that because wait, if you're at the top, what? Okay, so. I guess what I'm, what I'm, I'm just asking for. Yeah, your, I understand your what you're trying to. I'm saying yeah. that the the situation here mm -hmm. is analogous, really, to the situation yeah. here, which is you get so, to a flat space. However, however, yes, with if the you, one in the middle, yeah, there are more steps. It is right. not like at the top. It's totally you are at the next level, which right. is totally flat. This yeah. flatness here is limited to all maybe two or three steps wide. So yeah, it's, somebody it's, with um, visual impairment might be confused. Where am I? Am I at the yep. top of the steps or also somebody level? who needs to hold on to a rail to go up? That's I mean, right. you might not be visually impaired. You might you might be injured. Right, but uh, my point. My point is that from that perspective, when you get to the top, there's no railing. And when you get to the landing, do, do you see what I'm saying? In other words, and the, the railings continue such that there's really only a little over, it's like two and a half feet in between. That's a lot of feet. Okay. Yeah. When but you're at the I, top, you know you're at the top. Okay. Yeah. When exactly. you're in the middle, so you don't want to be in the, in, at the top, in the middle. I can't Probably. argue. I can't argue with the fact that when you're at the top, you're at the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when you're at the top, you know you're at the top. Yeah, that's you're right. in a safe you know, you're Yeah, in a safe somebody place. could, you could, yeah. yeah you got yeah, to I, the top. That's right. And yeah. 
And yeah, goes, I, I, I love her idea because people can still have that seating. That's it right. can still be social for everybody. That's right. And people yeah. who people who can't do the steps can sit at the top or at the bottom and exactly. people who can can do it. And it won't interfere with traffic flow, which I think could be pretty dangerous if you have a lot of people running to class, running to food, seeing their friend at the top, yelling That's to their friend at the bottom, not watching where they're going. You know, it is possible that people don't watch where they're going when they're 18 years old. Oh, you know, <laughs> we don't, they don't. Myra, I, I have many people question. have, yeah, to ask you and Ellie. Um, like when you're going up the steps and you have railing on both sides, when you're going up, do you have to hold on to both sides? No, of no. the railing. No, huh? no, no, no. Oh, so no. um, you, you either use the right side or the left because probably it's you wouldn't right even hold for it you. for support. You would just trail um, it with your hand. You're oh, just I like see. telling you where you are. Yeah, guiding, yeah, yeah. Guiding, I see, yeah. I see. Yeah, it's a so guide. I think maybe um, you can look into enlarging the steps and shrinking the benches. I think, yeah, well, I, I think that's that's definitely worth pursuing as a design direction. So we appreciate that feedback. Oh, I wish we had thought about that one for the, well, the student center, they didn't care. They built it all already. It was, um, but yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're at 443. And yeah. I just, if anybody yeah, that looks very nice. Okay. Um, Is the auditorium, um, did everybody look at the auditorium picture? No. Yes, I, oh, okay. let's look at the auditorium. Hold on. I don't see any problem with that. I'm going to share, Dan. Any problem with yes, that. I need Except to Cody brought up the um, other day, perhaps, that there might be more than four places for wheelchairs. I don't know if there is a formulaic way that you came up with four mm -hmm. or if you could put there, there is but before that Elise you had your hand raised did you have a comment on yeah I I did um I'm sorry did you, I just I can I never know with zoom how to quite get in and out um so I just want to clarify for myself those two red lines are the railing That's yes they were the railing mm -hmm. okay so there is a way going up to hold on to a railing on the right yes there is so i'm asking when i when i when i say yes confidently there is it mm -hmm. means in that top section there but, is a railing but going up the reason i'm asking is because i use a guide dog and my guide dog is on my left and my the only railing option i have is on my right got it yeah yeah, so, that's what I'm, I'm trying to get. So, <laughs> let me, so if you're so. just using the stairs, then that is true. If you yes. want to go into the seating area from below, mm -hmm. there would not be one to your right, because if there was, you wouldn't be able to get to the seats. So, so, right. so mm -hmm. which is to say you and your guide dog would come up in, in this area. I can't even see your pointer now. Really? This Wait. area here. Which yeah. area? I'm sorry, I can't see it. Um, you're pointing. Is that an orange circle? It's um, close to the red uh, right railing. He uh, drew a yeah thin line. Yeah. Can, yeah. Can I don't see, see a that? cursor, but I'll take okay. your word for it. Um, yeah. Well, I. I just I, wouldn't use the benches. Okay. So what was this little marking for? Oh, it was. It was to around. say that that's the zone. Where if you if you were going up with a guide dog on your left oh, oh, and you oh. want a, a rail on your right, mm -hmm. you oh, would, yeah, you would be going on the top yeah, side yeah, of the yeah. bottom red line. I see. Yeah, yeah. And where but you might be able to when you go down the staircase, at least you always hold on to the rail um, when you have your dog. Oh yeah, you always I do. Have to. Um, yeah, my balance is not great. So the red squiggle going up that, that's mm. what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. That would be you. Yeah. That would be your that balance. Be and I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean to be offended by this. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. This is, this is what I need. I need the color contrast, yeah. which is why I'm asking about it. This is great. Yeah, I like this idea. So you don't have to ask for variance or this. All fixed. Okay. 
All right, thank you for your patience. Yeah, so I, I, I guess that would be an interesting question because um, if you're if you're going to do it, then we don't need to deny to say we don't want to approve. We don't have any rights. Okay, we are advisory. You can we can yeah. write a letter to the AAB and tell them we don't like it, and they can say tough noogies, and you know they'll do, let you do it anyway. So we know that, um, but we can tell them why we don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, so that's an interesting. So I don't know how you intend to to so see it here, we, but we would need if, to know if we put that continuous. If we make that railing continuous, then there's no variance. Correct. Yeah, that's the right. Access board. About. As, what what what? That's right. What? what I would like to, to do is uh, tell you that we would like to study this and see if there's something that we're not thinking of in terms of why we can or can't make this wider. I think making the rail continuous, Bert, I don't see any reason that we couldn't do this in, in preference for I, I, I think that's I think that's a dead simple yes. You know, we can make the Fine. the uh, the the railing continuous. Uh, I, I think the I'm I'm not sure. I mean, uh, Ted uh, is. I don't know if Ted Dow is still available, but um, I I was under the impression that part of the issue is that for the two and a half foot wide piece or whatever width it becomes. That you still need to have railings on both sides, and that puts the railings we, right on the on your. I think I think you're right. I don't know if Ted and, and yeah. Jennifer were on was on too. I think we probably still need the variance for that. Yes. We're on the right side for the seats. Cl yeah, closest I, to the yeah, benches. Yeah, essentially correct. between yeah. between the stair and the benches. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, well, that of course makes can... the benches impossible to get to. So. Yeah. No. 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 We wouldn't want. I wouldn't want a railing blocking off the benches that seems ridiculous no yeah just like it would be downstairs too and you know that's that is ridiculous but there is you know i think she came up with a happy medium so that if the stairway were wider if everybody then everybody could get to benches without yeah. you know if you don't need a railing if you don't you know if you need a railing you're going to use a railing and if you don't need a railing you can use the benches you can you know you can use one right, side right. and use the right, benches. Right. But the other way, you don't provide a railing at all for people going the other direction. So mm -hmm. it's a problem. Yeah, I guess, um, yeah, we can write it. I guess I'll write it. Um, and I can write it in a way that for us, the, the that we, we really do want, that we would, you know, that if you have to have, if you have two railings, then there it doesn't need to be continuous railing between the benches and the railing because you weren't going to have them anyway right no you yeah, never intended yeah. to have railings on the benches that's right and that's the same that's issue the, here yeah so i've pulled up the, the auditorium. auditorium plans um so I, the top of the page is north again this is back on the first floor <clears throat> back behind those stairs you come into the north and you walk into the space um kind of walk you know there's there's like a wall in front of you to kind of break up the acoustically so you walk around that wall to either side and then you choose where you're going to go to sit um what we have is we've adjusted this the slope of the the depth of the whole space so there is a three foot difference between where you walk in and then it goes down three feet to the front of the room there is no stage at the front of the room it's flat oh, um, I see. and um, we have a little line here that's just a, a graphic line, so you can ignore that. And this is also a graphic line. But then you, so there's seats, and then on, and, and there's a sloped aisle between those seats and no railings. So it's at one in twelve. So the variance is to eliminate the rails because, but it's there. It's only four feet wide. So there's a, so you can touch the seats to kind of go down, and it's a and it's a low slope. So there's no steps. There is a accessible ramp on one side of the auditorium so that if you do need an accessible route, you can go that way. And we ha have some um, more visualization of that here. I, did, I forgot we had it a little zoomed in here. So here's that, that um, way in. We also have, we don't have enough room for two ramps. So what we have is a ramp on one side and a lift on the other side um, so that you have two 
accessible routes in. Um, oh, where's the lift? The lift is on on the if as you come if on the page, it's to the east. It's on the right side. Um, so that brings you to the front. Uh, so if you go down the in the lift, it brings you down directly to the front of the room. Okay. And there's okay. stairs there too, so that if you know, so that people can go out that way. So you get out of the elevator, you go across the back of the auditorium, you take the lift down to the bottom. No, you take you go, um, you're in the commons, you walk next to the auditorium. Okay. Like you're in the common space and you just go through through a door directly to the lift, take the lift down, and then you're on the um on the other side. Okay. And there's a wall there, so it's not it's not open to the auditorium either, too. So that if there's you know anybody comes to use it and something's already happening in there, the noise of using it will hopefully not be super distracting. Um, but you shouldn't, but there's always the option to come in at the same level and use the ramp on the side as well. And then, so I think the question was um, whether there's enough spots. So yeah, we do use a calculation to come up with the number of handicap seats and companion seats. And I don't know if Ted or Jennifer wants to talk about that at all, um, but they yeah. helped us figure out the number. So that's how we got to the four. Yeah, Carolyn, hi, this is Jennifer. Um, yeah, so that's just based on the uh, accessible seating tables in 521 CMR as well as the ADA. Okay, I have a question. Your 36 feet ramp, is it from the bottom to the front of the back seat or to the back of the back seat? The ramp goes from the back of the auditorium and then goes down to right. the front of the room. But when you're counting your 36 feet, are you counting from the front of the back seat mm -hmm. or to the back of the back seat? It's to the back of the front seat. So the, the front the front row is on the flat. The front row, yeah, but I, That's what so the 30, I'm just asking about the 36 foot ramp because yep. the, 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 so you have calculated it so that it is exactly one in 12. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yes. So it doesn't matter if it's to the front or the back, but you have figured in the space of the seat in, in the way you've figured it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Would you have railing on the, uh, on the uh, ramp? It's no. only four feet wide. The, the oh, thing on you the, had on a the railing ramp. in the middle, you'd only have oh. two feet on the other so, side. So on yeah. the, on the ramp, which is on yes. the left-hand side, that That's has a two, two sides, it, that has sides. railings on both sides. Yeah, ah, it's a fully okay. accessible yeah. ramp with railings on both sides. So yes, here, take a look. See, oh, that's a better the image. Oh, they do. Okay, they do have ramp. On so this both is what it looks yeah. like from the back. Oh, this is wonderful. I like this image better. You like these renderings? This quality is better. Okay, I that's do because I get a better sense because the other things are just too busy. Yeah. So yeah, the variance well, that, you want is to not have a railing inside on the, on the no, aisles. No, no. On no, the it, aisles it, between the sections of seating. Correct. correct. Oh, okay. And I it see. seems ridiculous. The only way you could have one, and it would cost you a lot of seats, is a center railing down the middle so right. you could hold on one way. But that would cost you a lot of seats. So yeah. correct. I mean. Because and people can get change. in a different way, I mean, it seems logical. I mean, and, and, okay, and it is a one in 12 anyway. Let, yeah. I have a question um, to ask. Uh, from my experience of going to uh, see some uh, plays or uh, music at the Amherst College, they have an auditorium. Um, oh, Huh? It's all steps. It's terrible for you. Oh, are you talking about the um, mullet? It, no. It's the back. They have a ramp, kind of. I haven't been there for several years. But um, at the back, um, behind the seat, yeah. uh, there's quite a bit of flat area. So yep. in this diagram, there are only two wheelchair accessible seats. Yes. But uh, there are, uh, like, if there are more people sitting there it seems like from this picture it looks like there's room for them to just 
just sit there in yeah. their wheelchair the, in the space. It's, it's true, um, Saren. One thing is that because it becomes flat uh, yes. behind, the yes. view angles won't be as good if you sit behind. Yeah. You can certainly it's it's it right. won't be the worst, but it won't be the best either. So. Right, but you can just put where the arrows. Uh, yeah, start, you could, or just behind that, could, so there'll be a little bit more. Um, that's true, scene. and in fact, it may, maybe even uh, better view angles would be to put seating in front of the front row, uh, in some cases, because down here you'd be yes. you'd be looking up at the yes. screens as yes. opposed to trying to look over somebody's head. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so and that's always there a way always you a can indicate that. Is there a way you can indicate that? I don't even know how you do that with signage or with something. I well, don't just, know if a, it's we're, a, we're at capacity. So this is a conversation that is an informal conversation or not, if that makes sense. I'm not sure where we are with the, num the number. Yeah, of people I, I, I mean, I think there's here. egress ca capacity, but I mean, the, the point the point is, I don't think unless it proved that the four seats weren't enough and and it's certainly it's it's exceeding what is required by mass access um you know uh, it, it's something that can be done there's nothing restricting that yeah if it turns out that we need additional uh wheelchair seating we could we could easily you know uh, cut down on the number of companion seats in the back or something like that. Or, but we'd or, have to be working with could, the actual users. You can also take out, out what seats. makes the most have sense. removable seating that yeah, matches the other seating in the way it looks, yeah. but it would be removable. Yeah. I mean, but, but please I, don't put the seats that you're thinking of on the sides because I always miss the middle of the screen. What is happening there? Ah. So, you know, so that we is could, so frustrating. In other words, in other words, we could take out two rows mm -hmm. at the end of uh, the central aisle, a uh, central yeah, row in exactly. the front, something like that. So, yeah. Okay. Ah. Okay. Okay. So, for our purposes, and I guess it's mine because I have to write it. Could you send an email that says? Variance X number, you know, number 3574, uh, you know, you know uh, is requesting blah, blah, blah. And the other one is requesting blah, blah, blah. So I know how to write it in a way. Um, I mean, we'll have to take a vote on these, um, but um, you know what I mean? I, I need yeah, to have yes. the variance number. I need to have it really succinctly put down. So I know I'll use your language, I'll, you know, and I'll say the committee voted X because. Okay, that so would be we, really actually, helpful to me. we actually sent you a draft. I didn't send it, submit it yet because I wanted to wait to have this conversation before I submitted it. So I don't have a variance number. Um, well, okay, I don't have a, I don't have any draft of any. What right, no, but, but the stuff request? that we sent you before was kind of just the draft of what we were thinking of. And then this, what I shared today is just a draft of what we were going to submit. So I haven't, because I wanted to wait and have this conversation. Okay, and then you, so you can fix that and then you'll send it. To yeah, Pamela, and then she can send it to me. Okay. You know, I missed the variance request for the auditorium. What was the request? The request is to not have a, a railing in those sloped aisles between the between seats. The sections. You can't get to the seats. Yeah. Between oh. the sections of seating. Between the sections. Oh, oh I see. I see. Mm -hmm. Cause a huge traffic jam for one thing. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to oh, interrupt. You guys can stand up. And how can you do it anyhow? Can't really. Yeah. One railing per okay. seat per row, mm -hmm. you cannot. It will block people. Okay. So Sarah, uh, Cody has his yeah. hand up. And then I just want to add something after Cody speaks. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I have to go to my net. Thank you all for taking the time and spoiling the project. 
Bodhi, are you able to stay to vote or would you like to tell us in advance how you would vote on the variances? Like, is it okay with you to not have the rails in the auditorium? And is it okay with you um, to for them to make it a larger staircase and have a non-continuous rail on the seating side on the benches? I don't know how to put yeah. that. But are both of those are okay with you the way Saren yeah. described? Okay. Okay. Pamela, can we say he voted? Yes. Yes, we'll, we'll say that he voted. Yeah, okay. That's what I think. Okay. I vote too. Okay. <laughs> thank okay. you for all this extra time with us, Cody. Well, thank, thank all of you for extra time. Okay. Um, so, so are, are hold on we, one second, yeah. Myra. Oh, yeah, I'm you sorry. want to speak. I'm sorry. Yeah, I yeah. just wanted to say that um, included in the materials that I sent out to the group at the very beginning was the draft language of the variants that does include um, the two re variants request. It's a it's a PDF form, so it's I'm not so sure um, if it's accessible um, on a reader, but we do have that language. Um, well, she said she wanted to change it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I, she said she had another document that she had not sent to us yet um, because she wanted to know how to change it. Is that correct? Yeah, I Ella? made, I what I sent earlier was a draft of these images that I shared with you today and a draft of that variance request. I added a couple of things before we met today. So it's not, what I sent is not finalized. So I can update that. Yep. And um, I'll send it to Bert and Pamela. You want me to send that to you directly, Pamela? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you'll yeah. have to send it to me direct, directly yeah. because I, I will need to send it out to the yeah. committee. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So thank you all. Uh, committee, hang out for one minute. Let's take a vote on these two requests. Um, but I think, I don't know. I For me, this was a really useful conversation. Sorry, it went way over time. We're not the easiest group to talk to because we have lots of ideas. And um, <laughs> I you know, appreciate it. You, you know what? Um, we, we found it very valuable and, yes. and you know, gives us uh, wonderful insight into the same spaces that we're designing, but from a different perspective. So thank you for sharing your experience of the, of yeah. the built environment. Well, thank you for listening to us patiently and yes. answering our silly questions. So, Not silly. No, but, but we want to know what is happening. <laughs> especially because this particular field, computer science, computer information systems, cybersecurity, all of these things are fields that people with a lot of disabilities can easily go yes. into. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so this is really critical for us in a way that you know, uh, you know, uh, um, certain other things might not be as critical, because there will be a lot of participation of people with a variety of disabling conditions. Mm -hmm. So, Thank and you, it's Myra. our state university, right, Maya? I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, and it is our state university, so we have to be the yeah. best. <laughs> Well, this yeah. was a really great conversation. The feedback was was really excellent. I yes. really appreciate it. So if you want to come to us again, I mean, I'm, I realize we have no power here, but if you want to come <laughs> to us again with the um, with the color schemes and with the, you know, texturizing of the floor and where the rug is and where the rug isn't, that would be really instructive for us and perhaps for you um, about wayfinding. Think about wayfinding with your feet. Terrific. Um, and Thank wayfinding... You. Wayfinding with your feet and wayfinding with your eyes. If all the world, if all the walls are the same color, that's mm. not going to be good wayfinding because mm. Elise might be turned around in a different direction. If all the walls you she's know, looking at are the same, yeah. she won't know where she's going. Uh, yeah, you, 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 know, you know, actually, I, you know, one one thing that I might find instructive is I would love to meet you on campus at some point, and and have you you know go into a space and have you explain to me <laughs> a little bit more in oh a little boy. more detail about what that what that experience is because it's you must have a mine. very tough campus it's oh, it's, it's, it's very I mean, tough it's to get really around hard. it's really yeah. hard 
it's a really tough campus. Yeah. And so, you know, starting from let's let's get the new things good. That's why I was so upset about the student center because that should have come to us. If they had come up with Saren's solution to that one, it would have been great. But they gotcha. didn't make it wide enough. Gotcha. Uh, is no. there we'll, see, anyway, we'll see what we can do. Is there any way you can also uh, address it that the entrance from the bus stop to the new uh, to the old building will be all leveled off because that probably and with the consideration of most of the students are likely to use the bus rather than the vans. We can we we should, easier access. We should look at that because I I my gut is that it's accessible now, but we haven't measured it because it's not been sort of part of the project, but. Um, I, I, should, can, I can and here's share the other what, crazy can, thing that isn't part of the project is that it it snows up here sometimes and yes. they don't shovel sometimes <laughs> yes and so as much as you can get in a covered walkway it makes yes. it possible for people who use chairs um and you know just other people anyway but people yeah. who use chairs can't do anything with the ice and snow but if if there if there were could ever be money budgeted to create more covered walkways no, that would um, be wonderful. That would be so good mm -hmm. for making things accessible. I mean, because you can't say, cannot... yeah, we're all crazy to live here and try to walk around. We should all go to school in Arizona. I understand that, but you know. Yeah. Uh, only if you... Oh, God. That Don't has you... other yeah. issues. So, I would not be able to deal with it politically. So yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> There's a reason well, we don't live here. <laughs> thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We need All two right. motions. We need one motion about the uh, auditorium um, request for a variance to have no um, no uh, railings in the aisles between the sections. Yes. We need yes. we need that. Yep. Somebody yep. move that. I'll move. You need a second? I second. And we need a vote. So, Ian? Uh, yes. Uh, Saren? Yes. Elise? Yes. And we had Cody, yes, and me, yes. Then we need another motion. This one's a little trickier. For that central staircase, I don't know what they're going to call it, but it had to have to do with the number they're going to send me, um, that we, that with the continuous rail, um, we realize that the continuous rail will support two-way traffic on the wide stair and that we do not believe that they need to have a continuous rail on the seating side of the narrow stair. Isn't that, I'll that's pretty that much it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so you'll motion, you'll move that and I need a second on that one. I do. Okay. So we need a vote. Saren? Yes. Elise? Yes. Ian? Yes. Me? Yes. And Cody was a yes. So now we can have a motion to adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Pamela, for specific, specifically for hanging out much longer than you expected to. But <laughs> I, I think we needed to have this conversation because I think they hadn't thought about a lot of stuff. So we need a motion to adjourn. I move. We need Elise. a second. Second. Okay, and we need every everybody in favor of adjourning say yes. 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 Everybody, yes. Not, <laughs> everybody not in favor of adjourning say no. <laughs> well, it looks like we're adjourning. Thank you all. Okay, bye bye. Thank, thank you, everybody. Right. Thank you, Pamela. All right. Thank My you. pleasure. All right. All right. Take care, everyone. Right. Okay. I'm bye glad bye. I make this. Bye. Yeah, I am. Bye. Too. Bye bye. 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 bye.